Welcome into the new year and to a new update video. This time you will see us for the last time renovating the room and getting it finally done. Also we start building a new room. This one is dedicated to our young plants and will just last for a couple of weeks. So don't worry about the somewhat chaotic structure. Also we're starting a rather more permanent project, which is the in-between door of the two houses. Unfortunately we forgot to film the first time when we painted the room. It really makes a big difference when you whiten all the walls and the roof. Before we did this we also grinded the walls and the ceiling to have a better surface. As we do use some very nice ecological color, we were very thankful for painting four layers of it onto the walls and ceiling. As a substructure for the floorboards, we used cork. We put down two layers of 8mm cork. This should dampen the sound when you walk on the finished boards. For the floor finish we went with quite some strong oak boards which are allegedly uh, locally sourced and they have a substructure of pine which also comes from Austria. Although you already have seen the finished room, here are some impressions of when we finished up the frames and the doors themselves.
And if you think that these look pretty neat and nice, that's true. Just a little bit long. Getting these frames finally installed was really a pleasant job. It was rather fast for the time that we spent on building them, but now it's close to be finished. To give our seedlings a good head start, they need light and heat, and in our case a lot of room. Because we haven't found a good solution yet, we built a temporary arrangement. The usage of the isolation is to keep the heat inside and keep the plants warm. Who would have guessed? This is located in our future workshop room, so we don't really use that room other than for storage and it doesn't bother us there. Here you can see us building frames for our planting tables. As those boards were very warped, we cut a groove into the frame which should stabilize this and get rid of this problem. As those tables will see a lot of water, we used resin coated plywood, as this should be efficient for this application. As these are quite big tables, the frames for them have to be as well. 
So once again, being lucky having helping hands, we went to work and created a lot of those grooved boards that now built the frames outside of those tables. Here you can see the final result. We put the tabletops onto some slanted wood constructions and drilled a hole for getting the water out of them. We are yet not sure if that is the best way or a sophisticated method of doing it, but time will tell. Usually we are not that big of a planners or show you the plans that we generated for a project. As this is a little bit more of a complex project, um, we were forced to make a plan before we started. So here is a picture of what it should look like when we're done. Maybe you can already see where we're going with this. Carpentry is a rather repetitive job. Everything starts with making your wood square. As you've seen this quite some times, we will once again show you how we square up our big timber for this door. And once again, we've been lucky, or me in that particular case, to have some people helping out as an extra hand, especially with the long timbers, is really needed. Although we do think this won't be a permanent construction, we will have it for the next couple of years. Therefore, we want to get rid of all the small imperfections that we have in the wood. Not just for optics, but also in case that there is shrinkage and the surface layer of vanish will be damaged throughout those imperfections. To get rid of them, we drill them out and put in some round wood plugs. And as we needed a lot of them, we bought a special drill to generate them ourselves. Also we will need some of those plugs in future projects, so it wouldn't hurt to have the possibility to do that.